Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Elevating Your Life. And oh my gosh, we're not only going to be elevated, we're going to be dancing. We are going to have so much fun today. Today <laughs> we have with us Jamie and Amy Honey. And first off, Jamie is known as an emotional energy specialist, died at 18 and returned with a unique insight into humanity and desire in understanding human behavior. For 20 years as an international stunt actor, improv trainer, and show creator for Universal Studios Japan and Warner Brothers Movie World Australia, Jamie lived and worked around the world experiencing various cultures and exploring new ways of thinking. Oh, I love it. Certified in Reiki, woo, chronic healing, emotion code, energy healing, hypnosis, combined with a passion for quantum physics, led Jamie to becoming a master integra integrator of personal development and the creative imaginative process. Jamie is a dynamic MC for many live events and with his seminars for entrepreneurs and business professionals, letting them untap their imagination and creativity for greater success. He is awesome. And his awesome spouse, Amy, she is an international speaker and trainer in areas of customer engagement, body language, behavior modification, sales, and habit transformation. She has an extensive background in high ticket sales and is known by her peers as the powerhouse closer. She has achieved over a million in product sales at live events and online and is an authentic risk taker with a great sense of humor. Amy has numerous health and fitness certifications and was a professional stunt actress. Amy's greatest passion is transforming people's lives to make positive impact on the world through her various programs. Oh, so wonderful. She's Did that, wait a minute, I got to back up real quick. Yes. Did that say a million? That should say seven million a year. <laughs> got, a year. Oh my yeah, about, God. Yeah, we bring in about seven million a year for our clients. And also the host... Uh, with Jamie of Meet the Authors, which I had the privilege of being a guest on. It was so fantastic. And oh my gosh. And she has three live shopping shows. She has the Meet the Authors, Unboxing the Unknown, and Anti-Aging Hour with Amy. Awesome. So anyway, first off, welcome you two. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks oh, for having us. It's so great honored. to see you again. Yeah, we're so honored that you um, invited us here. We really, really appreciate that. Oh, and I'm so honored. We're just, yep, we are energy brothers and sisters now. I love <laughs> Absolutely. It. I love it. Well, uh, first off, is there anything you want to throw out there about your background or, you know, something that, that has really triggered you into kind of why are you, where you're doing what you're doing now? Well, we've both had adventurous childhoods and we use the word adventurous um, because we want to look at the uh, positive aspect of every experience that we have. We, we can acknowledge the negative moments, yet if we constantly remember and regurgitate the negative moment and go, oh, hey, let's have a talk about my abusive childhood. It, it reinforces that emotional state. So we say we've had adventurous childhoods <laughs> and those adventures led us to wonderful understandings. Um, ironically, both of us left home on our own accord at uh, young ages. Amy, how old were you when you ran? I was 16 years old and, and homeless. And uh, I ended up living with a, my best friend in high school. I had to pay her mom. Her mom was a single mom. So I had to pay her a hundred a month <laughs> rent to stay at her place. And thank God it was only a hundred because that was about <laughs> it. I, I, I remember just eating noodles with nothing. Like I could, didn't even, I couldn't even afford salt, you know? And then at 19, I was, I was living in my car and pregnant. So, yeah. yeah. And I ran away from home at 18, <laughs> which seems to be a probably a good age you should have got out anyway. Yet I use the phrase ran away because I actually um, fled. I fled. I, yeah. I, I dropped my dad to work. Um, and this is just prior, a couple of months prior to this, um, I, I died in hospital. So I had internal bleeding injuries and I died a few months earlier. And so I just recovered. And um, 
due to the the fear of violence in the child in the childhood home um I dropped my father at work. Well, actually, I didn't even get to work. <laughs> he got halfway to work and there was an argument in the car um, that he goes, I'd rather I'd rather just get out and walk. And I went, okay. I pulled over. He got out in the rain and started walking to work. And I'm like, I'm going to die again. <laughs> He's going to kill me when he gets home. <laughs> so I was so afraid. I went home. I packed everything I possibly could in my Datsun 200B. <laughs> <laughs> and I fled the state and went and I worked in um, uh, a friend, uh, my cousins, one of their friends was a manager of a service station. So I started working in a service station. I did the nighttime shift. And then I did, um, uh, I was contract cleaning restaurants from like 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. in the morning. And then I put myself through university doing that. So I, I worked my way through university. Amy worked her way through high school. <laughs> and, and I got fake ID and worked in a bar. <laughs> so it's you do what you do while you move yes. forward. Yeah. Yes. Oh, both yeah. of you. I mean, you are an inspiration to others when things can seem helpless or you're crushed by something. You two show what you can do and and how you can progress. Oh my gosh, both of you. Well, are and inspiration. That's one of the reasons that I'm just a huge believer in a pay it forward kind of thing. So uh, we do, we have a Amazon live show where we, uh, companies send us products. So we literally get hundreds of products and we find people that have been through massive trauma and we reach out to them and we ship them care packages and match up products to people that need it. Um, and the, and a lot of other influencers would sell their stuff or whatever. But the reason that I am so passionate about doing that is because when I was homeless, it was in those moments that a stranger, a complete stranger showed me some kind of kindness that pulled me through, that got me through. That was what saved, literally saved my life. And so I'm, I'll get emotional because I'm so passionate about helping other people. Let's oh, get emotional. I want to see your makeup run. It does. It does. It's starting to run. Yes. So, <laughs> Amy awesome. deals with things through passion and I deal with it through humor. So through my childhood, I learned one of my natural skills was humor. So if I could use humor, people liked me more. And if people liked me more, I got more opportunities in life. So I would create supportive humor moments um, through life. And uh, one of the things I learned, so for everyone that's watching, if your parents tell you that you can't do something, um, <laughs> that's not necessarily true when you get older. You don't have to hold the limiting belief uh, that you have as a child of right and wrong um, of for uh, success or correct behavior. For example, as a child, you're told, don't speak to strangers. And so many of the uh, people that we teach in tr um, sales training entrepreneurs. is entrepreneurs is you have to speak to strangers. Yeah. But this subconscious mind is saying this is a bad thing. So I, I do work like energy work with people that have fear of sales and stage fright because most of that is a childhood belief created from an emotional experience that's acting in the background. We call them ninja thoughts. These little thoughts that we have that are hiding in the shadows of our brain, sabotaging our success or, or, or attacking the enemy, yet it's no longer an enemy. It's an opportunity. So that's one of the things. That I also want to point out on the other side of that, we could talk on forever, but on the other side of that, uh, when your parent does tell you they can't, you can't, they're coming from the perspective of not trying to sabotage you and not trying to be mean to you and not trying to abuse you. No. Uh, but it feels like that from the child's perspective, but they're coming from a place of love. They're trying to protect you. They're afraid for you. They're afraid of your outcome. They don't want to see you disappointed. They don't want to see you fail. And most of their um, concern for you is coming from their fear. So they have a fear yeah. of something. So they try to protect you from that fear, yet they instill restricting moments in you from a young age. Um, one of the examples I like to use is everything that I got in trouble for as a kid, I made hundreds of thousands of dollars for as an adult because I was an international stunt actor. So it's like- Jim Carrey, he's like, <laughs> those faces. <laughs> so I was told, don't play with fire. <laughs> don't fight with your friends. Don't climb up on tall things, you'll fall off. <laughs> 
So I became a stunt actor and did all those things and got paid money. <laughs> it was fun. I got to do... Oh, I can only imagine when I when I discovered that you were a stunt actor, I was just like, wow. It it is fun. You get to play as a child in dress up in costumes and have fun and it's active. And 99% of all the stunt actors I worked with were really cool, fun people as well. They, they have this, this, this liveliness and this life about them. Stunt people are a blast to hang out with. I yeah. was a stunt actress in Los Angeles. And uh, we, I, when, well, and that was when I, that was where I started studying body language. Because when you're doing stunt acting for film, you have to be able to move like the character. So if the character is a drug addict, you have to be able to have the body language of a drug addict, right? You have to be able to have the body language of the person that you're doubling, right? And so as stunt actors, we would go and sit at a coffee shop in LA and we would just watch people and we would, based on their body language, we would try to determine what they were gonna order. So yeah, so that's how I started studying body language. Didn't realize, everything I could do with it. <laughs> so now I'm, I'm now diving deep. fascinated with body language, but I really don't know anything about it. So what would you say to everyone that's like, okay, what's a little something I should look for? What, what would you share with us on that? To the first thing I would say is to be wary of anybody that tells you that one particular thing means something. Like for instance, if somebody crosses their arms, uh, that means that they're closed off. Not necessarily. They might be cold. They might be, there might be a lot of reasons that their arms are crossed. They might have a sore elbow. They might be comforting themselves in some way. So there could be a, a number of things. So when we're looking at body language, we're looking for what we say call clusters, cluster of things and incongruency. So the thing I'll ask you is what do you think is the most honest part of the body? Uh our our face, um, our eyes, maybe. Ooh, good question. So think about like us as children. So if you if you really want to study body language, watch kids. And my grandson's hilarious because one day in the kitchen he came to me because they 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 don't hide. They haven't learned to hide their facial expressions. They haven't learned to hide their body language yet. And um, so it's just, it's blaring when you study it. Like kids are like loud. <laughs> and so It's like starting at the basics. Here's, yeah. here's the basic body language. Oh, here's a child demonstrating, demonstrating it, it. Clear and clean and uninterrupted. Yeah, so. yeah. And so he comes to me in the kitchen because we always discuss what's your superpower, what's your superpower, right? And so he came to me in the kitchen and his eyes were huge. And he was like, grandma, he was about eight years old. Grandma. I just, I figured out your superpower. I said, you did, what is it? He goes, you just know everything. <laughs> cause he can't figure out how I know what he's thinking, how I know like, cause I, cause I can't help it. It's, I'll, I'll say it before he s expresses it sometimes cause I see it on his face, but so go, go ahead. I was just gonna say, everybody should study body language because it places you in a, it's not about me, it's about them kind of mindset. So you're more open to observing, listening and paying attention to other people as opposed to just running around telling your own story about how great you are, which and we see so often. And recognizing your own bias. Oh because yes. You cannot have bias when you're reading somebody. Yeah, you, you, have to, you have to come from a very neutral place, right? So, so the most honest part of the body is actually the feet. Oh. Yeah, the feet. And the reason is, is because number one, we haven't learned to create a poker face. We haven't learned like an, I'm an actress. I can create any emotion I want in any moment. Right. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, so yeah. So what Jamie's saying is that the feet are tied in with the limbic system in the brain mm -hmm. and we haven't learned to hide it. A uh, fight, flight, freeze, freeze, fight, flight. Um, yeah. Scenario. So, yeah. So when I'm working an event and we're looking at sales in the room, I'm looking at whose feet are pointed towards the person speaking and whose feet are pointed towards the door. If they're pointed towards the door, they're out. Don't, don't bug them. Don't press them. There's something else that's more important for them external to the room uh, than being in the room. And also the feet are furthest from your brain. And we learn 
uh, social behavior. And we learn to present it here. And the further we get from the brain, uh, it's almost like the slower the signal gets there. So you get to see these micro expressions of what's really going on in the person's brain. So the hands are the second thing that are the most honest. So you've got your feet, what, where they're pointing, what they're doing, if they're tapping, is it nervous? Uh, and then also um, the hands. A retraction of the hands is consider a no an extension is considered yes that's super 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 basic yeah and you'll notice it very like easy like you'll see somebody kind of grip or you'll see somebody relax and it's micro it can yeah. be very micro in the hands but um but the feet i love because like um like to watch children if you look a little kid and you see them excited they can't keep their feet on the ground they're like yeah, like what if they're you know feet are tapping yeah, it's because it's tied in with their limbic system and they can't, they're just... The excitement's there to move, to do something. This thing that you're talking about, yeah, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Uh, well, I know like yesterday I was in a car with the grandkids and we were singing, all three of us were singing and, you know, the legs are moving and... The... <laughs> they were having fun, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, kids are fun. I love kids. <laughs> yeah, I used to uh, be a guest speaker in um, high schools and middle schools in regard, and I would train uh, improv style brain entrainment exercises, talking about how we communicate, how we connect, and it was really rewarding to just to see how open minded um, a child's brain is compared to an adult's. Because I also did it. I did a, a Wednesday evening class for adults. You know, like 20, 30 people would show up and. One of the very same things that I asked is like, one of the directions was like, uh, you're giving directions to an alien. And um, and so the- uh, The adult interpretation. Yeah, I would go, goes beep, 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 boop, bop, boop, beep. I was like, okay, it's, it's very generalized. But the child was like, okay, you're giving directions to an alien. The kid goes, yeah, you've gone right past it. You go to the moon, and then you go. You got to go take a left all the way. It's about twenty thousand light years uh, going past the Alpha Minor system and 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 Pluto. <laughs> it's, yeah. oh, it's completely acceptable for me to it talk was, to an alien. And it was like an eight-year-old kid that this came out of his yeah, mouth. And yeah, we're, we're both like looking at him, like, oh my god, that was brilliant! Oh it's my god, fully accepting the moment. And then adding to it, and so many of us are conditioned to be afraid of the moment and then not do something wrong in the moment, which stifles and restricts and where the person that's controlling us in regards to that. And when we can let go of that yep, and be in that moment and say, bring it on, I'm here, what a change that could be in our life. Mm -hmm. Totally. So when we do sales training, we're teaching people to get out of their own way a lot of the time as well. Um, and when, when we like, for example, a lot of times we'll do a live seminar and Amy's the sales manager uh, in, in control of, or not in control, in support, in of, support. All the, in support of all the sales. Definitely not controlling those people. <laughs> Woo, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and I'll MC the event and I'm also working from the front of the stage to support the sale because our anagram for sale, because a lot of people have a, oh, about sales. They have this fear of sale. Um, they feel that it's an obligation or you're taking some from something from someone. But ours, S-A-L-E-S, -E is support and love everybody system. So a sale is only something you do if it's in support of that person, allowing them to have a more productive or more beneficial life or achieve their goal quicker with this product or service. So, And one of the things I always say, which sometimes the CEOs don't like it when I say this, <laughs> but I always say a successful sales call doesn't necessarily end in an exchange of money. A successful sales call means that both parties left feeling empowered. Um, that means that you really gave that other person really good help and that other person felt empowered and helped by you. Yes. And the reason that that's so important, especially these days, is that there's such a disconnect through internet, through all these things. You're creating relationship. And when you can create relationship and truly like get on a sales call with not the intention to sell them, but the intention to serve them and help mm. them. And when you do that, and when you come from that perspective, whether the sale is made at, at all or not, it doesn't really matter because when they are right for the program or when they are right for it, they will come back and buy. Yes, because you were the one that helped them. And all of these other people tried to do these high pressure sales tactics and tried to like manipulate into you to getting your credit card. 
And it just, it's not, it's not honest. It's not authentic. It doesn't feel good to them. They're not going to go back to those people. They're going to come back to me. You're right. And, it's like the energy, the energy yes. that you created between you and them. It exactly. Will come back to you positively. And if not through them, through somebody else, it doesn't matter. Karma's a big deal, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if people don't believe in karma, that's fine. You don't have to believe in gravity either for it to work. It's one of the laws of nature, <laughs> cause and effect. Uh, and energy is real. And energy doesn't get destroyed. It just changes form. So are we increasing a more expanded, open, loving energy? Or are we doing a constricting, colder, unpleasant form of that energy? And as the energy emotional specialist, I'm looking at the whole event, the whole room, whether it's an online event or whether it's an in-person event, we're still looking at the whole energy flow and what leads to a more successful event by more people achieving their goals by after they've left that event. Yes. Most of them, just to clarify here, most of the sales that we do, we don't sell anything ourselves. We sell other people's yeah. programs <laughs> and we work with uh, usually live seminars in the personal growth space. Yeah. So uh, like how to sell from stage, uh, um, uh, book publishing, like depending on where you want to go, it all boils back down to personal growth, right? And anybody that's listening to this going, well, this doesn't concern me because it's it's not to do with sales. Um, let, let me ask you this question. Have you had a child? Have you had a relationship? Sales is all part of those conversations. <laughs> um, do you eat? <laughs> do you breathe? Do you drink water? Because <laughs> there's been a sales conversation in some some aspect because you're making a buying decision on what you put into your body, either intellectually or physically. Yeah. And it's funny because like people don't feel resentful when they go to the grocery store and hand over money at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't feel resentful about that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? I have always believed that first impression, that first time with someone sharing, when I sold my restaurant, I got a job as a receptionist for a building company. And I told the owners one day, you know, I am the first, I take my job seriously. I'm the first impression of your company, mm. whether they call, whether they walk in the door. And I take that very seriously. And about a week or two later, I come to work and I had business cards that said, Paul Vale, first impression representative. But you know, it's <laughs> so true. I love that though. That's so true. I love it. Yes. And we call that, we call that touch points. That means any time that the company uh, gets in touch with a customer, whether it's through you or through uh, somebody else in the company, that's a touch point. That's an important piece of, of touch point. And this is where I see companies really fail is not making sure that they're, that the policies and the systems all along, you know, are congruent with each other. It's like, uh, one company that we're dealing with right now, it's a, it's a landlord and it's a property manager. Well, we call the property manager with a problem. They go, oh, no, that's the landlord's problem. So we call the landlord and they go, no, that's the property manager problem. So it's not incongruent, right? And it's through the, it's through their communication that is failing. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Well, will you share with everyone how they can uh, find out more about you guys, connect with you guys and your shows and what you do? Absolutely. So if you go to happyhoneys.com, H-A-P-P-Y-H-O-N-E-Y-S.com, uh, that's where we post a lot of our products and stuff. But in the upper left-hand corner there, there's an Amazon Live link in that upper, yeah, left to the left side. Amazon Live, click that Amazon Live link. That's going to take you to our Amazon Live page. And uh, if you click through there, uh, go ahead and follow us on there. It's free to do it. We do get commissions on anything you purchase through that link. But at the same time, we get special discounts from all of our sponsors. And so most of the products that we have are sponsored. And so we ask them for special discounts. So when you go through that link and add it to your cart, you might see uh, extra discounts on your products. Yeah, it costs you. It doesn't cost you any extra. It's paid by Amazon and the and the product owner, the, the company. They're yeah. the ones that pay a little bit of commission to us and they give bonuses if you come through us. So if you go through that link and then shop on Amazon, you're going to potentially find some uh, bonus deals when you put it into your shopping cart. And um, that website is H-A-P-P-Y-H-O-N-E-Y-S.com. Happyhoneys.com. Just, just did a little slower because they probably haven't heard the it before. H, they haven't heard it with the H. They haven't heard it with the H. And <laughs> it's very important that you have a 
H <laughs> and it's a herb, which is a totally different subject we're going to talk about. Later. <laughs> and then for social media, you can find me at Amy Jo Honey on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. You can find Jamie at Jamie Honey or Jamie Honey Dare. Yeah. Uh, um, Honey Dare is our, our company. And uh, Dare, D A R E, stands for Design, Align, Remind Every Day. It's about the thought habits you have that affect the environment that you experience. Yes, I love that. Oh, you two are just so amazing. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. Thanks this for having us. Oh, great. Oh, it's been great. Thank you so much. Everyone, thank you for joining us. Love, hugs, and blessings. Jamie and Amy, love, hugs, and blessings. You were just fantastic. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Paula. Appreciate oh, being love here. It.